All right. Um, so here we go with our practice quiz. Looking at the first question, we have two to the or two x to the negative fourth power. We want to find the domain, the range, intervals of increase and intervals of decrease. So first of all, uh, two x to the negative fourth. If we remember our exponent rules real quick, that's going to help us out here. Because uh, we will do this one kind of by graphing as well. But um, remembering that 2x to the negative fourth is like kind of 2 times 1 over x to the fourth or 2 over x to the fourth. Because remember, a negative exponent gets thrown into the denominator. Um, so in that case, if we were kind of taking a look at domain and range, uh, first off, what I would look at is, is there any particular x value that x will never be? Well, we can't be zero because we'd have a dividing by zero issue. So just by the equation, we can know that we probably aren't, are going to have to exclude zero from our domain. So then uh, taking a look at the graph of this uh, in Desmos, we notice that it looks like this, 2x to the negative fourth. This is what we get. And sure enough, we have an asymptote at zero, where x is zero. But it does continue on forever in the negative direction and forever in the positive x direction. So that does tell us that our um, domain is only going to be excluding zero. So for my domain, I'm going to have negative infinity to zero unioned with zero to positive infinity but not including zero. So we don't want the bracket to show that we're including zero or excluding it. Okay, and then likewise for the range, we could also think about it in a similar fashion just by looking at the equation. Um, X to the fourth, is that ever going to be a negative number? No. So since that's the case, we're not gonna have any negative values of Y. Our function is never, uh, the H of X is never gonna be less than zero. Is it ever going to be zero even? Well, no, because we have two over something. And as that uh, x value gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it gets closer and closer to zero, but it never actually quite reaches the zero because we still have this two on the top. So that's one thing that we could be thinking about when we start talking about range here, just from looking at the function itself. And then when we go to look at the graph, turns out our assumption or our, um, our hypothesis is correct. We have an asymptote at zero, it gets very, very close to zero, but never actually gets there. And it goes up to positive infinity. And there's nothing uh, down below the x-axis here. So our range turns out to be zero to positive infinity, not including zero. All right. Then we want intervals of increase when this roller coaster is going up the hill. So if I start over here, notice we are increasing very, very slowly, increasing, and then we start increasing very, very quickly, and increasing and increasing and increasing, and it doesn't start decreasing until we jump over past the asymptote. So from negative infinity up to zero, this function is increasing for x values, negative infinity to zero. And then it's decreasing from x values of zero off to positive infinity. It's decreasing very quickly here. And then it slows down and decreases a lot slower, but it's still decreasing. So our intervals, our interval of increase is negative infinity to zero. Our interval of decrease is zero to positive infinity. And that's all of our information for the first question. Any questions about that first question? Any parts we want to go back to? Anything we're not sure about? Okay. If you do have any questions or anything like that, unmute yourself or type in the chat. But we'll move on to number two. Number two, we're going to need to square this thing at some point in order to solve it. But before we do that, I want to move everything that doesn't have a square root in it onto the other side. So we're going to subtract 2 from both sides and get x minus 2 over here equals the square root of 2x minus 4. 
Then we can go ahead and square both sides. But when I square the left-hand side, be careful. Make sure you do x minus 2 times x minus 2. Don't just distribute the square to these and call it good. So x minus 2 times x minus 2 gives us x to the uh, second, x squared, uh, minus 4x plus 4. And then over here, we're just left with 2x minus 4 because the square cancels out the root. And now I want to move everything onto one side. So minus 2x and plus 4. So we get x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 0. This is the part where you can either factor it or use the quadratic formula or stick it into Desmos and see where the zeros are. It doesn't matter to me which one you choose to do. Um, I'm going to factor it. So we're looking for things that, um, let's see, multiply to 8 and add to negative 6. So that would be this thing's going to factor into x minus 4 times x minus 2, since negative 4 times negative 2 is 8, and negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. So that means my solutions would be x equals 4 and 2, but then I need to go back and check them and make sure that they both work. So if you forgot this part from that, um, from this section in class, uh, this is a good point to go back and check both of those things. They both might be answers to my, or solutions to my equation, but they, uh, one of them might not be. So we want to make sure. So for the first one, we're going to plug in x equals 4. We get 4 equals 2 plus the square root of 2 times 4 minus 4. Well, 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 4 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, so we do get 4 equals 4 for that. So x equals 4 is a solution, but now we have to go and check 2 as well. And 2 times 2 is 4, 4 minus 4 is 0. Square root of 0 is 0, so we do get 2 equals 2. So these are both solutions. x equals 4, and 2 is our final answer for that question. So both of them work out just fine. OK. So again, with that one, don't forget to add the or uh, subtract the 2 over first. And then when you square both sides, don't forget uh, to multiply x minus 2 times x minus 2. Those are the most common areas that I see mistakes on these kind of problems. Any questions on that one? Anything in particular, numbers that don't make sense or that we're not sure where they came from? Steps, we're not sure why they happened. Okay. Then the last question. We are told that this is h of x here, x to the fifth minus 3x to the fourth minus 4x to the third plus 12x squared minus 32x plus 96. And we are also told that 2i is a 0. This is where we have to do that synthetic division to divide out the uh, 2i and the negative 2i, since we also know since 2i is a 0, negative 2i is also a 0. So I'm going to stick 2i in the box. It doesn't matter which one you put in first, 2i or negative 2i. Um, and then I'm going to write my coefficients here. We have 1, negative 3, negative 4, 12, negative 32, and positive 96. And there's no gaps in here. We do have 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0 powers of x. So we don't have to include any zeros as placeholders or anything like that. So 
So now we do our long, or not our long division, our synthetic division. Bring down the one. One times two i is two i. Then we have negative three plus two i. Since I can't combine those terms, I just leave them like this. And now I have to multiply this thing by two i. So we have kind of do some work down here. Uh, 2i times negative 3 plus 2i. Well, that gives me negative 6i, and then we have 4i squared. But i squared, remember, is negative 1. So it's really negative 4 here minus 6i. That's what's going to go here, negative 4 minus 6i. So then when I go down and add these, negative 4 plus negative 4 is negative 8 minus 6i. Now I'm going to have to multiply this by 2i. So doing some more work down here, we have 2i times negative 8 minus 6i. Distributing that through, we get negative 16i. And then 2 times 6 is 12 i squared and then remember i squared is negative one so this is really positive 12 minus 16 i so that's what's going to go up here then adding these 12 and 12 is 24 minus 16 i then we're going to do some more multiplication here 2 i times 24 minus 16i. Doing our distributing, we get 48i minus 32i squared. And then remembering this is i squared is uh, negative 1. So this is really positive 32 uh, plus 48i. which works out nicely because negative 32 plus 32 is zero. So we're just left with 48i when we bring that down. And then we do our last bit of multiplying here. 48i times 2i gives us 96i squared, which is also known as negative 96. So we add those and get zero, which is what we would like to have happen because uh, if this wasn't a zero, then this wouldn't be a factor, which would be a problem. So if you end up down here at the bottom and this is not a zero, then you should go back and check your work and figure out where something went wrong. Okay, so that's the first part. We found um, our new coefficients after factoring uh, or after uh, dividing out that 2i. So now we're going to do it with negative 2i in the box instead. Let me grab another piece of paper here. And we're going to set up some more synthetic division. But this time we've got negative 2i in the box. And these are going to be my coefficients. So we have 1 negative 3 plus 2i, negative 8 minus 6i, 24 minus 16i, and 48i. We bring down the 1. 1 times negative 2i is negative 2i. And this time doing the synthetic division should be significantly easier because our i's cancel here. We get just negative 3. Negative 3 times 2i is positive 6i. The i's cancel and we get negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 2i is 16i. The i's cancel and we get 24. 24 times negative 2i is negative 48i, and so we get 0. And that is exactly what should happen. Again, you should end up with zero at the end. If something, if you did not get a zero, something went wrong. Okay.
So now notice that we started out with a fifth degree equation, x to the fifth, and we divided twice. So that means that when I go out handing out x's down here, we're going to get x to the third for our leading power of x. And then minus 3x squared minus 8x plus 24. Okay, then we get to go finish factoring here. So we know two of our zeros are 2i and negative 2i, but we still have to finish factoring the rest to find the real zeros here. Now you could just stick this into Desmos and uh, find your zeros by clicking on them. That's totally okay. Um, in fact, you could stick this whole thing into Desmos and find your real zeros by clicking on them and then know that these two are also your zeros. Um, but anyway, to factor this, if I was going to do it the, uh, by hand, I would factor out my, um, I would split it in half, factor out the GCF here, which is x squared. Be left with x minus 3. And then on this side, I would factor out a uh, negative 8. And then we'd be left with x minus 3. And then notice we have an x minus 3 in common, so we'd have x squared minus 8 times x minus 3. And then I'm not quite done factoring here. We do have difference of squares. So we get x uh, minus the square root of 8, x plus the square root of 8, x minus 3. And then also, if you wanted to like simplify things even further, we would have x minus 2 root 2, x plus 2 root 2, because the square root of 8 is also known as 2 root 2. And then we also, um, so for that part in the question where it says, write it as um, the uh, product of linear um, let's see, linear functions. Um, let's see, how did we phrase that exactly? It was product of linear factors. Yeah. Okay. So these are my linear factors uh, that are real factors and then our imaginary ones as well. X minus 2i and x plus 2i. So this is our product of linear factors. Okay. Then we want to also list our zeros. And that's as simple as going, okay, we have, uh, if I set this equal to zero, we would get two root two. If I set this equal to zero, we would get negative two root two. If I set this equal to zero, I would get three. If I set this equal to zero, I would get 2i. If I set this equal to zero, I would get negative 2i. So these are the two parts to my answer from number three. Okay. That's probably the hardest one on there um, because it does require a bit of um, going through and long dividing or synthetically dividing with imaginary numbers and then also um, doing some factoring or um, if you prefer not to factor going to Desmos and clicking on the zeros. Are there any questions, any parts that we would like to go back to with that one? Check the chat. We go back to the first one. Uh, yes, I can go back to the first one. Okay, any other questions, comments, concerns here? Okay. Since I already got the first one recorded, I'm going to stop recording. Um,